Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. It's Saturday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That means it's time for our Saturday walk and talk. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Super. Good morning. Great. All awesome. Right. So uh, broadcasting here from downtown Grand Rapids, and uh, at least Emily and I are. So I'd uh, like to start off with uh, wishing Emily, my wife, a very happy birthday, which was yesterday, but we're staying, we stayed last night, we're staying tonight as well. So happy birthday, Emily. <laughs> that deadpan. Thank I think you. Everybody's, I think everybody's <laughs> muted. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Well, we are going to get rolling. We've got a lot to cover as always. Um, I particularly have a kind of a topic queued up that is going to be um, a little bit lengthy, a little bit of a science quarter, uh, you know, corner as I, I joke sometimes. So I tried to condense it. Of all things, I'm going to be talking about meth. You say, what? Meth? Not meth, like that kind of meth. I'm going to be talking about methylation, which is a really interesting thing that we all should be paying attention to and is particularly notable uh, when it comes to supplementation and nutrition. So more on that later if we have time. First, um, we are going to go around the horn and... We're going to go pro to Carol and then to Bruce and Eileen. Uh, good morning, Carol. How are you? Oh, I'm super duper. How are you guys? Doing great. Doing great. 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 Well, the sun is just kind of peeking out. We have a little bit of a haze, but um, the sun's coming out. So pretty soon it's going to be beautiful. And I just want to say hello to everybody. And a special thank you to uh, Emily and Eric for... Uh, taking that time out this morning and on Emily's birthday weekend when they are having a wonderful time at the Amway Grand Plaza, but they still, Eric is still on the walk and talk. And that should speak volumes to all of us that um, even though maybe we don't want to get out of bed or, uh, you know, for whatever reason, we let something get in the way. Um, here's Eric and Emily and on Emily's uh, happy birthday weekend. Uh, Eric's still on because it is who he is. And I guess, uh, so thank you, Eric and Emily. And mm -hmm. I guess I want to talk uh, just for just a second. I won't take as long as I did last week because I kind of got on a roll. But um, who are you? And uh, I uh, was thinking this morning about mindset. And um, I hope you all back in your book Atomic Habits, because I don't know how many times I've read it. I'm reading it again, and I'm reading it like a new person. It's just amazing, but every time you meet it, read it, you read with new ears, new eyes, a new mindset. And I'm in there, was talking about somebody that um, maybe says, I'm going to run a marathon. Okay, so let's use Emily, since our birthday girl is a great example. Emily ran a marathon. Emily set her goal for running a marathon, but more important, Emily set her goal to be a runner. There's a difference between setting your goal to run a marathon or any Olympic thing or being that thing. And for Emily, she's a runner. She didn't just run a marathon. Uh, somebody else might say, I read this book. I set my goal to read three books in blah, blah, blah time. Okay, are you a reader or did you set your goal to read three books? If you set your goal to read three books when those three books are over, well, you might not go back to reading. Where if you determine, I'm sorry, I got, I'm going to stop here because I know it's hard to understand me if I'm power walking. But if you set your goal, uh, then I am a reader and I love reading and I'm going to continue to read. Then you become a reader, not just set a goal to read three books. Uh, or whatever it might be for you. Um, somebody might say, uh, um, you want a cigarette? No, I'm not a smoker. Well, you might have been an ex-smoker, but you might say, um, oh, I used to smoke, um, but I quit, I, I quit smoking. Okay, or I can't smoke anymore because it's a bad habit. All right, it's better to say, 
I'm not a smoker. And it makes a whole different mindset in your own mind. It's not so much about what you say to the other person, but what you're reconfirming in your own mind. And so I thought that was a particularly good thing to um, remind ourselves is that um, we're healthy people and we're healthy people that love to be healthy people. Not, I can't have a dessert or I can't do this or I can't do that or I'm on a diet or whatever. It's, um, I chose a healthy lifestyle and I love this healthy lifestyle and this is who I am. I love being healthy and I make healthy choices. And when you keep repeating that in your own mind, then you become who you verbalize. And then that's nine tenths of the battle right there because you've changed your mindset. So um, I, that's one reason that Eric and I are working and I think we've pretty well finalized it, but we really haven't had time to kind of readdress it yet. But um, the mental prep, um, when you come into the program of those 10 audios and, and reading the um, uh, Atomic Habits book, uh, it, those things start to help you realize that you are now changing and you are transforming. And there's people on this call, a number of people that have literally transformed their bodies and their minds through this program recently or a long time ago. And so they're not the same person they were when they came in. They look at themselves different. They have different tastes, different desires, different choices that they automatically make now. And that's where your real transformation occurs. So I just wanted to leave that with you, Eric. Um, uh, I'll turn it back over to you, but I want to, that was just kind of fresh in my mind. I thought I would share it with everybody. We just kind of need to go back and say, who are we? And, um, and hopefully it's a good answer. So back to you, I, Eric. I, thank you so much, Carol. I think that's amazing. And so, you know, coming out of the book, Atomic Habits, man, that book is the absolute, so, so, so great. Uh, there's so much in there in general, but certainly as it relates to us and the Health Point program. And what you're talking about, Carol, and I see Hank is on here as well, and, and uh, hopefully we'll hear from him later. I, it's embedded in my mind, you know, sometimes what I've heard Hank say, where he, same thing, you know, be careful what you're telling yourself. Is, and, and what Hank often would refer to is how people that define themselves as it relates to their career. So they might say, for example, this is, I think, what Hank would uh, example, where they say, well, I'm an engineer. And he would be like, well, no, no, you're a human being who has a job as an engineer. You're a, a human being that has a career as an engineer. But, um, you know, the value of that, as Hank would say, again, it's pointing to mindset, is if you identify yourself as an engineer, what happens when you lose your job or what happens when you retire, you know? And so I love what you're saying here, Carol, is we are healthy people, okay? I choose to be healthy people. We are healthy people, not I'm depriving myself of this or this is, you know, any other mindset. We are, we are healthy people. Boy, and I know, you know, you, you used Emily as an example here with her with running and so forth. But if, if uh, there is the, the queen of the mindset, uh, Kathy, you are the step queen. We identify you as a, as a step queen. But, but Emily, time and time again, refers to the mindset, the mindset, the mindset. And so it's very important what we say to ourselves. So thank you so much for that, Carol. Um, again, the book, Atomic Habits, is where you can learn more on that segment, but it sure applies here to what we're doing. So thank you. Uh, we're going to continue around the horn, um, and I'm going to queue up a couple other people. I'm going to say uh, David and Chris after Eileen. And then Marilyn, if you'd like to share on here, I know you're not always able to, but you've had some recent breakthroughs, particularly coming through week five, week six, and now into uh, a fresh week one, you might want to provide some insights on that. If you're interested, Marilyn, if not, I'll go uh, then. But uh, going over to Bruce and Eileen, and I see Eileen. Good morning, Eileen. Good morning. We've uh, already gotten back from our walk because as you know, we're always on this time crunch in the morning, but I wanted to share two things. One, I totally agree with what you both have been saying. People will say to me, 
oh, you can't have that on your diet, can you? And I'm like, I, I choose not to have that. I can have whatever I want. I choose not to eat that because I don't feel like a prisoner to this plan. I feel like this is freedom for me. Um, that's one thing I just wanted to share. But um, this yesterday we were meeting with a realtor talking about some things and she was, we were talking about when we moved here and you know, going out to eat and eating hamburgers and taste testing onion rings. And she's like, yeah, I've gained 15 pounds living here, going out to eat and blah, blah, blah. And so we started, I told her what I've been doing. And so she wanted to know more for herself. And also she has a friend who's a nurse who's very overweight. It's hard for her to work. And she wanted, she, she wants to lose weight, doesn't know how, blah, blah, blah. So I said, I'd meet with them and tell them what I'm doing. And then, um, or they could meet with my coach. And then she texted me and said, send me your coach's name. I have another friend. There's three of us who are interested. So I just think that's, I don't know. I think that's really awesome because that's how I learned about the program was talking to Carol and Bell's store. So I'm hoping they can also share this joy that I have. Wow. And I, mean, I believe you have um, a, a new breakthrough uh, low weight this week. Yeah. So Bruce, by mistake, said I've already hit 60 pounds and I haven't yet. He's, he, he's <laughs> pretty sweet about that. But um, I, I've been struggling. It keeps going up and down a little bit. And I, I've been taking some stuff that's, I think, giving like uh, for my knees, I have a knee problem, collagen and some other stuff that somebody recommended. And I think it's hindering me. So I stopped doing that. And I've done a couple days of the um, plateau diet. And finally, it started going down again. So I'm really excited about that. Well, and you lost uh, well over 50 pounds. When she says up and down, she's talking ounces. She's not talking pounds, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to I'll put that in context. But um, also, uh, yeah, you, you've lost the weight. And when you think about that, and this is the first time you've even thought about plateau. Uh, and we, we really kind of treaded through that rather lightly. But it's been about a week hovering right around, up a few ounces, down a few ounces, but doing all the right stuff. And I thought, well, for the first time since the end of August, uh, let's address the plateau for a few days and uh, see if we can't nudge you off that, that memory weight you might have had a while back. So it sounds like it's working. Yeah, I hope to get in the next lower numbers. I'll just share it, whatever. 140s, that's, that's where I need to be next. So I'm looking forward to that. And you are ounces from there. <laughs> yeah, this morning. Yeah, I'm pretty close, but it was just, I'm po 0.8 away. Well, 0.9. I need a pound. Okay. Yeah. Wow. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And that's, it's so great. And, you know, you're also about your friends or the, your contact with the realtor and then her friends and so forth. Isn't that amazing? And isn't that what we experience time and time again in uh, health point? I hate to use the, the food uh, metaphor, but it's like popcorn, isn't it? Right. Where you get, uh, there's just a, a few people or maybe just yourself. And then, you know, it's very visual and viral. We want to talk about it. People have a high interest in that. They love to be able to have a conversation with somebody that they know, that they like, that they trust. This isn't some celebrity on a, on a Super Bowl commercial or something. You know, they meet you, Eileen. They, they you, know, you know, know you as a good human being. They know, like, and trust you. And, and you're getting great results. And it's, uh, we, we just continue to influence people. So that is really exciting. That is really fun. So excellent. All right, and yeah, and continued success uh, within ounces of your 140s. Very, very cool. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Eileen. I know you guys have super busy schedules in the morning, so we'll move along. We're going to move to uh, David and Chris, and then Marilyn, if she cares to chat. If she doesn't, I'll kind of chat on her behalf on some things, because I think it points to um, you know, this concept of plateaus and, and so forth and some interesting insights that she had and then uh, myself, and then um, Hank, and then um, uh, Larry, 
if I see him on here. Okay, uh, David, going around to you uh, in out brave in the cold out in somewhere in Michigan. Yeah. Wow. Just like Florida, another beautiful day in Michigan. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, I just get bored with the repetition. <laughs> Chris uh, always jokes with me and says, because she, I'm the one who kind of pushes on this. And she always looks around. And she goes, do you see anybody else out here? It's 20 degrees, you know? So, but, uh, <laughs> well at least you know it's predictable <laughs> <laughs> yes um three short things uh one i wanted to thank hank uh, uh from the tuesday night's presentation on the gut health and again we're talking about mental the, the brain and getting our brain right and our head right and how much our gut has to do with getting our brain right and so i thank him for that um, I thank uh, Eric for uh, the bit. Well, he gave some great examples of how to talk to people. So I got a couple of really great sentences from you on that. So I appreciate that. But also just talking about, we're talking about pre-diabetic and diabetic. And you were talking about the conference that you went to and say, oh, no, it's 88% of the people because it's metabolic problems like heart problems and sugar problems and other problems and how health point really kind of attacks all those things. So grateful for that. Um, Carol, last week, I think, talked about the importance of, if you can, to do this as a couple, if you're a couple. And I just wanted to relate that, you know, I always see myself as thin. I don't need a wellness program. And, you know, I don't, you know 10 plus years ago when Chris started health point, well, she, she did all the cooking, so obviously I ate Health Point. And but over the past 10 years, I've lost 25 pounds on Health Point when thinking that I didn't need to. So, uh, wow. anyways, so even as thin as I was, uh, I'm healthier now than I was then. And then, uh, lastly, just talking about the mental toughness. Um, a little bit out of breath. I don't know why, I'm a sanguine. And uh, Carolyn Leaf, Dr. Carolyn Leaf is someone who Nancy Dornan turned me on to and she's a brain doctor, does research and shows the difference in the brain, you can do this and do that. And um, I kind of really came to the point where I realized Karen Leaf talks about the mind controlling the brain. So the brain's sort of like your subconscious maybe. And, but I think of my brain as being engineering and my mind is creative because I want to try something new. And so I say, I'm going to start getting up at eight o'clock in the morning or 7.30 to be ready by eight o'clock to do the Zoom walks. And my brain's automatically engineering goes, we've never done that before. No need to do that. And how you need to learn to become mentally tough. And those word choices that everyone has spoken about is just so important that you no, know, a word that I like is choose. I choose to do this. And I find that if you tell an engineer, my wife's kind of engineering, no, I've chosen to do this, which means I've made a decision. And once you've made a decision, most times people will back down and give you some slack. And I find that when I tell myself I've chosen to do something that I need to do, that I have a button. I find it a little bit easier to get myself into the groove of doing what I need to do. So hope some of that made sense. I'm out of breath. Enjoy it made day. A, it made a ton of sense, Dave, as it, as it always does with you. And, you know, out of breath is one thing. I, your fingers have got to be freezing. I know what that's like uh, holding up that phone in this kind of weather. <laughs> because... Emily and I have done that, so I'm, I'm feeling for your fingertips right now because I know what they feel like. <laughs> so super appreciate uh, you and Chris uh, and you just uh, braving this weather and sharing the way you have. You know, 
David mentioned something about the 25 pounds that he lost and that, you know, physically to look at them, you'd, you'd wonder where and everything. There is like literally a term that's used in medical, you know, terminology. It's, it's called, uh, uh, it's called TOFI, T-O-F-I. And it stands for thin on the outside, fat on the inside. It's actually a medical, you know, a terminology that's used in the medical, uh, you know, clinicians and so forth. And what they're referring to is, that what we talked about last week on the three different types of fat and where people that are thin on the outside might be fat on the inside and that's that visceral fat and if you remember the uh, visceral fat is a more concerning fat the most concerning fat is liver fat but it's the uh, visceral fat the fat that's packed around various organs that is particularly uh, noteworthy it can be very very harmful and that's a to that's called tofi thin on the outside fat on the inside and then i love your comment about dr carolyn leaf you know she covers so much on the mind and on the subject of epigenetics which is actually you know something that i'll be touching on here if i get into my methylation um you know nerdy stuff here but epigenetics is what i think the first time i really understood that term and got into it was with uh, uh, Dr. Carolyn Leaf's uh, book. So David, thank you for bringing her up. But uh, she's another really great author uh, for sure. So I wanted to go next to um, Marilyn, Eric, if you- Eric, be, Eric before you yeah. move on, can I just yeah. remind the folks, um, I've talked about the Tanita scale often, and I think a lot of you have it or have gone to purchase it. On that scale, it will show you your visceral fat reading and it will show you the healthy range. And I think that's a real important one because uh, exactly what you said, Eric, a lot of times people are slender on the outside, but fat on the inside. And then there's also nine blocks and it shows where you fall in the blocks based on all the readings on the scale when you weigh yourself in the morning. And um, whatever block you fall in, it'll tell you um, you have high muscle, you have low muscle, uh, you're overfat, I mean, overweight or underweight. And so those gives you readings kind of behind the scale figure. And so I just wanted to remind the folks of that. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but. No, um, that's great. And could you, I mean, we have one of the scales and I still don't know how to say it or spell it. <laughs> what is the, what is the oh. name of that scale again? So for people that yeah. want to take action on this, it's called Tanita or Takina or something. T A T like Tom, A N like Nancy, I T A. And then um, I've had mine for so many years, but it does um, have a guide. It comes with a book and on that book, it will show you the different readings and what have you. And I just printed that off. And I use that as a constant reminder to make sure my numbers. And when you eat the health point um, habits way, those numbers do not change. They just don't change. It's so amazing how they, I mean, ounces maybe, but so much they stay in that range. So it's, yeah, Tanita, T-A-N-I-T-A. And I just bought mine, I think on eBay for, well, back when I bought mine, it was like $99 or something, but uh, I love it. Awesome. It gives, you, gives you your bone mass. It gives you um, your water, how much water percentage you are, um, uh, your metabolic rates, your metabolic age. It's really interesting. So anyway, thank yeah, you. Yeah, those. Scales have come a long way from the old spring loaded, you know, very inaccurate ones. I mean, these, you know, of course you can connect them to your, an app on your phone and they're really amazing. So Tanita scale, T-A-N-I-T-A. -A. So thank you for that. For anybody who wants to take action on that, you've got it now. Uh, moving along, I think I see Marilyn, you did unmute. So I'm going to assume that you're, you're good to go on chatting. Are you there, Marilyn? Yes, I am. All right. I'm going to try to talk anyways today. Oh, that, yeah. So, um, yeah. So Marilyn is also caught coming off of a, uh, a, a bug. This is the first time I've heard you talk with it. So sorry about that. I forgot about that. Yeah, I did know that from your check-ins, but I uh, failed to remember it here this morning. Well, I'll, how about I do this? I'll do most of the talking 
in terms of kind of setting up some context for what we would be talking about. Does that sound good, Marilyn? Perfect. All right. Maybe I'll be doing all the talking. Poor, poor Marilyn. Uh, <laughs> I think so. Talking about <laughs> talk about soldiering through you know carol is talking about emily and i here doing this program you know when we're staying in downtown grand rapids that's that's nothing thank you uh marilyn so here's a context so marilyn is just trucking right along in fact she is now you know well into uh 30 pounds down 30 pounds plus down and she did have a point where she was a little bit you know call it a plateau call it what you uh, want, but I, I actually I do think that it's important to make a distinction when whenever anybody well, has any kind that, of a uh, hold up, and, and we've got some uh, we need some right, muting going right. on. Uh, we need some mute. Afternoon. Somebody please I mute. You can mute. Oh, well, I have a little yeah. rule. Let me uh, <laughs> let me go ahead and mute. One moment. One moment. Think I walk the way I know. Walk all around normally. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Okay. One of the benefits of walking outside is you meet people. One of the uh, disadvantages of walking outside is you meet people. <laughs> so you, you carry on a conversation. That's okay. We're rolling. So, so Marilyn had, you know, it was kind of, you know, not on her normal progression of loss, a little bit of a plateau and so forth. And she's really great at uh, logging things and, <coughs> and so forth. So I asked to see some of the logs and she was coming into the add more food days, weeks five, week six. And what I noticed was that, um, uh-oh, hopefully I didn't freeze here. Can you guys still hear me? Yep. Okay, all right, good. All right, thought something happened there. What happened is, and this is the key point for people to understand, is sometimes, ironically, you're not eating enough. You're not eating enough quantity, and you're not eating frequently enough, okay? So our bodies, okay, so think about the Health Point program. It's a six-week cycle program, and there's the four weeks, which is the menu plan days, which is you know, your, your weight loss. And then there's a add more food days. Why do we do that? Why is that built into the system? Why did they learn, you know, four decades ago that the science behind this is that you needed to make that adjustment is because, and we talked about this a number of times, but I'm just reiterating it uh, to make the point that your body, what, you know, we've evolved as a species that if there's a deficit, call it a caloric deficit, call it a carbohydrate deficit, it will kind of for a survival mode, start holding on to fat. It will start uh, arresting your weight loss. It'll start slowing down your burn rate because if, you're, if your bi biology thinks that there's not food aplenty around, then for survival modes, it wants to slow your burn rate, your metabolic burn rate so that you live, so that you survive. So how do we counteract that? We come into weeks five, level one, and then progressively level two, level three. And what are we doing? We're adding more food. And if we do that properly, the body says, hey, there's plenty of food around here. Let's keep the metabolism burning quickly. And so you do that by increasing your protein quantity and your other macronutrient quantities. You maintain a steady cadence of uh, protein snacks. And if you don't do that, what happens is your body starts to kind of freeze up and go into that starvation mode, okay? So Marilyn, what you experienced when we looked at your actual food log is that you were, you were, not, you were not eating enough, right? You were not eating um, uh, enough at breakfast, lunch, and dinner and that you were struggling because it's tax season and so forth, you're so busy. Uh, you actually ended up, I think, setting an alarm on your phone 
to remind you to have a protein snack. And even with that, it was difficult. Am I categorizing your, I, I'm not trying to say things for you, except that I know you've got a cold and it's difficult <laughs> to talk. Is that is that phrasing things about right on your experience, Marilyn? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so what's interesting is she was still in add more food days. I think we, we kind of got that kind of uh, underway as we moved out of week five and into week six. And in week six, even though she's like, oh my gosh, you know, eight ounces of protein, you know, I, you know, how can I eat all this, right? You know, oh my gosh, all this food. And yet what was happening is she was still continuing not to lose a lot, but she wasn't, she definitely wasn't gaining. She wasn't even staying. She was actually, because her, her burn rate is speeding up, she was actually losing. Is that right, uh, Mar Marilyn? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. So guys, that's why it's so important. You know, our intuition, if we don't know any different, we don't know the science behind the program, if we haven't done the program, um, our intuition is, hey, you just starve yourself into uh, weight loss. <laughs> well, that's A, that's very, very difficult, but B, our body, our biology has mechanisms that will, will work to counteract that. And, and the brilliance of the health point system is it takes not just that into account, it takes all kinds of other things into account that are not intu intuitive. If you just follow the program, it all works, but sometimes our intuition and our habits and our just our own thinking kind of override, sometimes almost on a subtle basis, you don't even realize you're doing it, okay? But uh, I thought that was a really powerful lesson that would be particularly valuable for other people to hear that, you know, when you get into those add more food days, follow it, eat it. Oh, and then here's the other thing. When, so Marilyn started into uh, week one on her next cycle and, so the body now is like happy days are here again in, in week six, right? Eating lots of food, burn rate is increasing, increasing. And then what does she do? Monday, bam, starts into a fresh week, uh, six week cycle. You're dropping like a rock, weren't you, Marilyn? The pounds were just bam, bam, bam. You know, Tuesday, Wednesday, just dropping, dropping, dropping. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Two pounds like a day. Yeah. Yeah. Like two pounds a day, right? Um, yeah. So again, you guys, it's, this system is brilliant. Um, it's, it's just, it, it continually, continuously just uh, fascinates me on, on the brilliance of the, of the system and so forth. So, and sometimes again, that's the value of a coach. It's not like I had any like super, you know, huge insights. It's just that, you know, Marilyn's living her life. She's in the hunt. She's just doing day to day. Sometimes an outside observer kind of has fresh eyes and says, Hey, you know, I noticed on your proteins on your lunch or your proteins on your dinner, this is not enough. Okay. And it's, that's the value of having uh, an outside coach that can kind of help you take a look at those things. So, so Marilyn, I, I know you're scratchy throat and suffering through a bug there. Thank you so much for hopping on here and giving your uh, squeaky voiced responses <laughs> where, where you could. <laughs> we thank you so much and uh, we'll let you go back on to mute and we'll, we'll continue along. Okay. Welcome. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Well, guys, at the risk of feeling like I'm absolutely talking too much, I'm going to go into my segment because I queued myself up next, which is kind of silly since I just basically talk all through Maryland's. <laughs> okay. Um, and this one is, I hesitated to cover this, but it's, it's so important, so relevant. I hesitated to cover it because even with trying to condense some things, even with using some artificial intelligence to try to express this in a more fun way. I've got a little story that you know I'll, I'll read to you here. It's still kind of dense topic, but I kind of want to begin with the end in mind and, and, and point out that we're going to cover a, a topic called methylation in the body. And what is really, really 
big to know here is that methylation is incredibly influenced by nutrition and specifically supplementation. Okay. So sometimes, you know, people wonder, like, let's just be candid on health point. And if you haven't been asked this, I've been asked that many times. And, and that is, well, can I lose weight, you know, on the health point program if I didn't take the supplements? Well, technically, yeah, you could. Now I remind them that we're not, this is not called diet point. This is not called weight loss point. This is called health point. So it's not just about losing weight. Uh, it is about getting your body healthy, but sometimes it can be, I think it's important for us to, to have some, some tools, some, some language, some knowledge at our disposal to understand how important nutrition is and how important supplementation can be. And then of course, in our brand of supplementation, it just with Neutralite, it just stands out all, all on its own. So with that, I'm going to get into some, some stuff here, and I'm sorry, I've, I've just got to read it. I know that's not the most fun way to go through things, but I'm going to kind of uh, struggle my way through this. Okay, so where a lot of this came from, last week I re referenced um, Dr. Uh, Nisha Winters and a, a book. I met Dr. Nisha Winters when Emily and I were at the Metabolic Health Conference, and she is the an absolute, you know, OG, an original gangster in the in the field of metabolic approach to cancer. Her own uh, story is she had stage four cervical cancer, uh, given like five months to live, if I remember the story correctly, and that was 32 years later. And she is a doctor, you know, just really, really kicking it in this in this realm. And she has a book called The Metabolic Approach to Cancer, and I'm continuing to read through that. And it's really fascinating stuff. And I just want to read a couple of excerpts from it and then move right along here. Okay. So this is an excerpt from her book. It says, changes in the pattern of DNA methylation have been a consistent finding in cancer cells. Reduced levels of DNA methylation called hypomethylation can result in DNA instability. While the overexpression of genes or hypermethylation has been associated with the silencing of valuable tumor suppressor genes. Okay, kind of thick stuff, kind of heavy there, you know, kind of technical, nerdy, biological, and it doesn't get easier. I'm moving on. Okay. <laughs> and and it's and it's funny when I when I read this next part, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of of a um of a uh well let me just read it it says here we cover mthfrs now this is an actual name of uh, of uh the component here we cover mthfrs role in methylation one of the body's primary epigenetic modification systems. Remember, we were talking about David and, and Carolyn Leaf and epigenetics. Here we cover MTHFR's role in methylation, one of the body's primary epigenetic modification systems, a critical process used to silence mutated genes that also just so happens to be entirely dependent on nutrition. Okay. Now, Let's get into more on methylation. I told you I was going to talk about meth, <laughs> methylation, not meth. Okay, methylation. Okay. The process of methylation plays a crucial role in various biological systems, including the immune system, neurological system, and detoxification processes. Methylation is a biochemical process involved the transfer of a methyl group onto amino acids, DNA, RNA, and other molecules, which can significantly affect their function and activity. Here's how methylation impacts these systems. Number one, the immune system. Methylation plays a vital role in regulating the expression of genes involved in immune responses. Proper methylation is necessary for the production and function of cytokines, which are sign signaling molecules that mediate and regulate immunity, inflammation, and 
I'll pass on that word. I don't even know how to say it. Dysregulated methylation can lead to an impaired immune response, making the body more susceptible to infections and diseases. Additionally, methylation is involved in the differentiation and proliferation of immune cells, such as T cells and B cells, ensuring a proper adaptive immune response. So that's on the effect on the immune system. We talk about immunity a lot, right? Okay, let's move on. There's only three of them here. The next one is neurological systems. <clears throat> In the neurological system, methylation is critical for the regulation of gene expression, neural function, and the maintenance of the myelin sheath, which insulates nerve fibers. This process influences brain development, neuron function, and met metabolism of neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. Abnormal methylation patterns have been associated with various neurological disorders and conditions, including Alzheimer's disease, autism, spectrum disorders, and depression. Methylation also affects the synthesis of glutathione, a major antioxidant in the brain, which helps protect against oxidative stress and damage. Okay, that's the neurological system. So we've covered the immune system, the neurological system. Last is a detoxification process. Methylation is crucial for detoxification processes in the liver and other tissues. It helps convert toxins, hormones and other molecules into water soluble compounds that can be excreted from the body. One key aspect of detoxification is a methylation of heavy metals, such as arsenic and mercury, making them less toxic and easier to eliminate. Furthermore, methylation is involved in the synthesis of glutathione, the body's most important intracellular antioxidant, which plays a significant role in detoxifying reactive oxygen species and other harmful compounds. Okay. <clears throat> Overall, methylation is a fundamental biochemical process that affects various aspects of health by regulating gene expression, protein function, and metabolism of various compounds. Disruptions in methylation processes can lead to a wide range of health issues, highlighting the importance of maintaining proper methylation balance for optimal health. Okay, I, I, I know this is lengthy, this is deep, this is long, or I'm gonna to try to keep it relevant here. Let's get to, you know, for those that are either, either clients with health points or certainly coaches, let's get into, you know, we've got this package, we've got Neutralite, we're recommending Omegas and Double X and, 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 and uh, stuff for your, your bio, you know, your gut. Okay. Nutrition plays a pivotal role in supporting the methylation process because specific nutrients are required as cofactors or substrates for enzymes involved in the methylation cycle, including the MTHFR, okay? Here are key nutrients and supplements that can optimize methylation processes in the body. I'll be quick on these. Number one, folate, which is uh, vitamin B9, all right? is directly involved in the methyl methylation cycle. Vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is another critical nutrient that alongside folate in the methylation process, it's essential for the synthesis of methy methionine for, from homocysteine. Okay, moving on. Vitamin B6. Vitamin C B6 assists in the conversion of homocysteine to cysteine, which is part of the methylation cycle and crucial for glutathione production, the pri body's primary antioxidant. Betaine, betaine acts as a methyl donor in the conversion of homocysteine to meth methylionine. Choline, choline is another essential nutrient that acts as a methyl donor. Magnesium, magnesium acts as a cofactor for many enzymes, including those involved in the methylation process. It plays a role in DNA repair and synthesis and supports overall cellular health. And lastly, zinc, lastly in this list, zinc, zinc is crucial for DNA synthesis and repair and acts as a cofactor for methylation enzyme. It supports the function of hundreds of enzymes and is essential for the immune function and protein synthesis. In summary, to optimize health related to methylation, consuming a diet rich in these nutrients is essential. However, for some individuals, especially those with MTHFR mutations, 
which a large percentage of the population has, it notes earlier in the book, uh, for these mutations or other genetic factors that affect methylation, supplementation may be necessary to achieve optimal methylation status. Okay, so you can get, you know, of course, you know, in macronutrients, uh, particularly crucif cruciferous uh, uh, foods, dark leafy greens, and so forth, you can get a lot of these micronutrients that are listed here that are so critical for the methylation process. But as we talk about, you know, we're, it's, it's almost like a nutritional insurance to be doing a high caliber uh, supplementation to make sure that you're getting these micronutrients that uh, don't just focus on methylation, but focus on all kinds of biological processes but in this context, it, it's really important in methylation. Okay, at the risk of really, really overdoing this, uh, actually, I, I, I'm gonna do something here. I don't think we've ever done it on the uh, walk and talk. I'm actually gonna share my screen here for those that are walking. It's, it's, it's nothing big. It's just, a, uh, just to give a, a little fun. I had an image uh, put together here. And... Let's see here. Okay, sometimes a word picture <clears throat> makes a, a difference, right? So you see, for those that aren't able to watch your screen, <clears throat> you know, we're talking about genetics here in our bodies, you know, you can imagine just, you know, billions and billions of genes, okay? So I had an image put together that is a, a bunch of people in various shades of genes, uh, you know, gene pants, gene shirts, gene coats, genes, everything, and just it's just a sea of people. And, and sometimes we learn well with a, a story. So um, here's the story of methylation using this image. In a bustling city square, every person is donned in various shades of blue denim. These are the genes people each representing a unique gene in the vast expanse of the human genome. Among them, some stand out. These individuals wear denim hats, jackets, and pants, but with a distinct feature, a piece of tape over their mouth. And you might not be able to see that, particularly if you're not looking at the, the screen, but amongst this scene of you know, millions of genes people, some of them have tape over their mouths. Okay, this tape is no ordinary accessory. It represents the body's precise method of silencing certain genes like a master librarian, librarian might mark specific books to restrict their lender. The tape akin to the methyl group in the realm of genetics is play, carefully placed by meticulous hand of an unseen force known as methylation. As the genes people mingle and go about their day, the ones with tape over their mouths stand in contrast to their expressive counterparts. These silenced individuals cannot speak their stories remain untold, their instructions unheard. This is the body's way of ensuring that not all genes people are active at once, preventing chaos in the cellular city. The square is lively yet ordered. Genes people with tape, uh, genes people with tape converse through gestures, participating in the day's activities, but in a more regulated manner. The crowd moves like a well-oiled machine, each denim-clad individual playing their part with methylation, deciding who speaks and who remains silent. The tape of silence is essential, for without it, the genes people might all speak at once, drowning out all necessary commands and leading to disarray. Some genes people are taped because their message might be harmful if heard, like instructions that can lead to illness. Others are silenced because it's simply not their time to speak, like seasonal genes waiting for their turn with the change of weather. So the genes people live harmoniously, a community of genes, each with a time to speak and a time to be silent, all thanks to the careful regulation by the invisible yet ever present tape of methylation. Okay, let me uh, end the screen share there and uh, wrap up my segment here. Uh, let me get back here. Okay. Okay. So guys, that was very lengthy. I apologize for that. Um, 
the subject of methylation in, in, in a nutshell, and, and if anybody has any questions or comments, uh, uh, you know, chime in, but the subject of, of methylation, again, originally came to me in the context of reading Dr. Nisha Winter's book, The Metabolic Approach to Cancer. And as you're going through that, you just are so grateful for a program like HealthPoint that is, you know, focused on all aspects of health, not just, you know, losing fat, but rather the incredible uh, role that overall health is, including, um, you know, nutrition and supplementation. So that's, that's the takeaway on that. All right. If there's no comments or questions, uh, trust me, there's no pop quiz on that. Uh, I won't, <laughs> we won't be doing that. I know that was a lot. Um, we're going to turn it over next if he's uh, interested and available to the one and only Hank. Uh, Hank, if you're there, and then Larry, if you are. And I am looking here. Okay, I see Hank, and I'll wait to see if you unmute yourself. We'll give a bit of a pause here. And Hank has unmuted himself. Good morning, Hank. Good morning, guys. Good to talk to you, to listen to all of you. And that was quite a download there, Eric. <laughs> awesome. Yes. But it makes me realize why it's so important to use Neutralite. Now, we start talking about micronutrients and macronutrients. We have it. But all this other stuff in the marketplace, they lack micronutrients because they're not made from plants. And that's the only place you get the micronutrients, to my knowledge. So thanks for that. But it just emphasizes more we have the best of the best, okay? Now, uh, last Tuesday, I did a presentation on gut health. And uh, I hope you listened to it. And there's a lot of stuff. But... As I was digging into that, I love, you know, reading the quotes from Hippocrates about uh, your food should be your medicine, your medicine should be your food. We know that. But as I dug in deeper, he had another quote. I didn't use it, but here's what he said. Death begins in the gut. Whoa, that hit me like a ton of bricks. Death begins in the gut. And that's so true. We become what we eat, right? So. I just did my morning ritual with the prebiotics or probiotics. And just real briefly, because some people say, well, prebiotics are just getting fiber in your system. The question is not just getting fiber in the system. The prebiotics, which we have, by the way, by Neutralite, has to be resistant to acidic pH of the stomach. and cannot, cannot be degraded by human digestive enzymes or absorbed uh, in the gastrointestinal tract. It can be fermented by the intestinal microbiota. It can stimulate the growth and activity of the intestinal microbiome to improve human health. That's the key to prebiotics. And then prebiotics and probiotics, let me finish with that. Probiotics are live or microorganisms. If you read our information about our probiotics, it, go, it go, comes alive in the packet, okay? And it feeds on the prebiotics that we take with it. So probiotics are live microorganisms that give health benefits to the host taking them when administered in adequate amounts. Probiotics are administered to support the human microbiome, the community of microorganisms that live on and in the human body. Probiotics communicate with the nervous system, inhibit the growth of pathogenic organisms, colonize the gut microbiome, modulate immu immune function, synthesize vitamins, enzymes, and short-chain short fatty acids, and regulate digested, digestion and met metabolism. So I hope that kind of clarifies a little bit about yeah, prebiotics and probiotics that are so vital. And I, like I said, I made that my morning ritual. I just got done doing that before I start talking to you. And I looked up some information on it to share with you. So I hope this was helpful. And uh, get your prebiotics and probiotics in the morning to get your system going straight and on track 
so you're ready for the day, okay? Enjoy the day and have a great one. Good to listen to all of you. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you so much, Hank. Yeah, you know, I made a note here that on the prebiotics, they need to uh, be able to work within the system, within our, our body, but it, it's got to be a product that's designed to resist the initial acid of the stomach. And so I, it's, again, we can just be thankful for the Neutralite brand and the scientists and the decades and decades of work in this field that that brand has had. For many of us that were on the tour out at Neutralite, boy, is that driven home big time with that tour on how knowledgeable they are on the development of these products. So excellent. Thank you so much, Hank. Appreciate that. And to bring us around towards uh, home, if he's available, is Larry. Larry, are you there? Yes, I am, Eric. Hang on. There you are. Good morning. Hey, how are you this morning? Doing well. Hey, good, Eric. Hey, Eric, I just want to tell you, you took me back to my college days when uh, I had to take anatomy and kinesiology and biology. And we, um, we were in phys ed and we were taking it with the nurses. And so uh, a lot of times it felt like a foreign language that they were giving us as they were given all the information. But mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I wanted to say was that uh, for like Eileen, that I have been in that plateau um, st stuck area, you know, where you just kind of get stuck in a plateau. And my coach, David, always helped me to uh, make it through there because many times uh, what we are do doing is we look at the scale because we weigh ourselves every day. But sometimes the scale is not the only measure that we should do. And I think I've mentioned it a couple of times before. Many times we have to look at how we fit in our clothes and sometimes that's different. And so we have things that are going on. And just like Eileen was saying, you know, she's she was doing pounds before and now she's doing ounces. And so sometimes what we think is a lot uh, is not that much, it's just a little. And so as you've mentioned here, we stay in some kind of range, uh, a little bit above, a little bit below. And so sometimes we're in that little range right there. And David has helped me through it because I'd be saying, David, I'm, I'm stuck here. I'm not, you know, I'm not going anywhere. Sometimes I'm going up, you know, sometimes I'm going down. And so that happens, but we can't just depend on the scale all the time. And so we have to look at the other measures that are going on. We have more energy. We look better in our clothes. And so sometimes we're losing inches and it doesn't show up in the pounds because we have more muscle. So I'm thinking that that's a lot of times what happens. And the one other thing, the vitamins are so important. You know, when I first started helping clients before, at first, most of them would start off with, with our vitamins because they get the whole beginning package. But some of them, as they move along, then they wanted to try to try other things that were maybe less costly, you know, for whatever reason, their budget or whatever reason that they thought. But, you know, eventually I, I got stronger in doing that with people because I realized that they weren't getting the benefits of Neutralite and many of our vitamins and supplements because they were using other things that uh, didn't have the same composition that our products have. And so, you know, I've learned over the years that to make people, not to make them, but to ask them to stick with the Nutrilite products, the things that we give them, because we know what's in those products and we know that they're going to get results. And so, um, you know, that's one thing that, um, that I think that is very important. And it's like I said, and the other thing is about the plateaus, you're going to have those. And so don't let your... Don't be afraid. Don't let yourself be scared because you've reached those plateaus. Those are going to happen. They happen to everybody. But then you'll work your way on through them. 
And finally, you know, not to take up too much time, finally um, was, had a doctor's appointment the other day and the doctor, um, hey, cut, cut uh, medications again. He cut them in half. And so, uh, Woo, even though, yeah, so that's even that awesome. it doesn't believe that's in, awesome, Larry. That's right. Yeah. Even though I had a doctor that doesn't believe in vitamins and supplements, uh, he's starting to he's starting to question. You know what's what's going on? You know you whatever you're doing, keep on doing. And instead of having uh, several appointments during the course of the year. Uh, he's like, well, we only need to see one another on a yearly basis. And so uh, just stick with your program. Keep on doing what you're doing. Sometimes you can even help out the experts. So keep that in mind. Keep on doing what you're doing. And thank you, Eric. That's all I have to add. Well, that's awesome, Larry. Thank you so much. Wow. That's what a Tremendous ending note here, cutting medications in half, uh, causing your primary care physician to kind of take note and uh, say, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And, uh, and then <clears throat> most importantly, you know, you're getting the results and feeling great. <clears throat> so great, great closing note on that, Larry. If nobody else has anything uh, else to add, we are at that one hour mark um, and we'll do a wrap. If nothing else, three. Oh, uh, real quickly, I do send out the YouTube of this, and I try to do that right away on Saturday. Okay, so I'm going to switch to one email a week, and it will just have the latest episode. And of course, there will be the link to this is should somebody want to join on a future Saturday live because it's great to be in here live for any questions and and rapport and stuff like that so I am trying to get that uploaded to YouTube and out the same day here on Saturday it's super easy for me I'll make that happen and I just wanted to make that one programming note but as always guys this has been phenomenal um so great spending Saturday morning with you guys uh and we'll see you same time same place next week bye 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 bye. Thanks bye -bye. a lot. Thanks, everybody. Happy Thanks, birthday, Emily. Emily. Everybody Enjoy have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.